we are going to get this uh, recorded for YouTube 2022. So one of, one of the things that we came together and decided to as a leadership was we had a lot of different teaching topics that we had that were all encompassing, different ideas. And one of the things that we went through and prayed through and, and really wanted to focus on and what the Lord was doing for, for each of us uh, this year was to have a focus on who Christ is, with that is being summed up as first love. And now, does that sound like a familiar reference to anybody? First love? Lucas, you know? You could say it. Ritter? Huh? Wasn't it a bit bitter for you at one point? I could be. Oh, I mean, I'm talking about <laughs> in the Bible. Oh. Uh, yes, it was. Uh, I think it was. Maybe it was, it was 2016. First. It was. Uh, we love him because he first loved us. Okay, that's that's a good one. Maybe that one. Yes, going forward, Revelation uh, to the book of Ephesus. That there was a word that Jesus had for the church. And now this word wasn't first love wasn't chosen because it's a time for rebuke, just to let you know. And if you feel conviction from the Holy Spirit, that's okay. But I mean, that's good. But really, it was more as an encouragement to remind us of who loved us first, like Lucas was saying. And I love this picture because it gives us a focus, yes, on the future, that this is the book of Revelation. That's also something that we want to touch on in the year, as many of you have been mentioning and saying, let's go through the book of Revelation because I've been feeling like there's a lot of end time stuff happening, right? <laughs> what does the Bible have to say about the future? That's, that's good. We do want to do that. But if you look at what Jesus says to that church, there's an emphasis on going back. It says, return to your first love and do the things that you did at first, right? And so for us, it's looking at, and this is Revelation 2, 4, if you wanted to look at that. For us, it's saying, okay, as the well, as we're getting ready to celebrate five years, as we're excited for what God has done and what he's going to do, what does it mean to look at Jesus and embrace all that he has for us, right? Uh, because there's so much, and there's so much that we can focus on, but we don't want to look at the periphery things. We want to focus and keep the main thing the main thing, and that is why it's first love for the year, um, and not realizing that was also a midwinter theme. Uh, that, that, is, that is true, but one thing, one thing we wanted to do with that is, is go through and talk about who the well is. So, um, John, if you can go on the website and you can screen share um, what's going, uh, the website of the page that I show you. So we have on the website for Venice, there's a, uh, a well page that also links up our YouTube and Instagram. And thanks to Natasha for hooking all that up. Um, but we do have a, a vision for the well. And you're like, I didn't even realize we had a vision for the well, right? Because we need to put that up in places to be able to see. And look at that page there. That's beautiful. And so if you could scroll down to the part where it says the vision, and then we can read that together. <clears throat> it may be hard on my end because of the screen, but I will do that. Um, it says the well is a group of young adults <laughs> rooted in God's love, Ephesians 3, 18. Prayerfully devoted to learning from the word, Acts 2.42. Building, Building community, Hebrews 10.25. <laughs> and reaching from the west side to the world for Christ. And that's from Matthew 28.19-20. to 20. That's right, because we realize that not only do we want to be able to see the lives change in people that are in L.A., it's much like how we have a send off for Caitlin, and there's others like Rye who went back up north, and others like Uredi further east. That we want to be able to still be connected even beyond LA, right? Yeah, yeah this can be that place. And this is important because when you're thinking about first love, there's others that don't have the true glimpse of who Christ is and what that love entails. LA is a city of a four million people. 25% of that are young adults. That means there are 1 million people in the young adult age of 18 to mid-30s, let's just say. <laughs> and the statistics have shown how much 
suffering there has been going on, especially since the pandemic and after. Loneliness has increased 63%, suicide rate, depression, anxiety, depression and anxiety. All of these have happened. And so I'm thankful when getting ready for five years and seeing what else the Lord has done for the well to think through and say, Lord, how can we embrace you as our first love so that others out there can also know of this love that we have? Yeah. And yes, that love needs to be shown to one another. And of course, in our imperfections, we need more of that in our lives too. But also focusing on Christ because who knows if there's someone out there needing a biblical-based Christ-centered community. Those are very important words. Yeah. You can have community without Christ. It's not the same. It's bad. <laughs> <laughs> Amen, brother. <laughs> But how that needs to be emphasized, because with that, we want to represent Christ. And so people will want to know who Christ is through the love that is shown through us in our community. And so we're going to be breaking apart this vision statement that John put up. Thank you so much. And looking at each week as an aspect of that through the lens of first love. So the first part of that is that the well is a group of young adults rooted in God's love. And so if you could turn with me to Ephesians 3, that's where we're really going to be mostly today. And I loved how God in his supreme wisdom had us choose without thinking about it that Revelation 2.4 is speaking to the church in Ephesus. And this is the passage I get to start on about God's love and not forsaking that love and embracing that love in the book of Ephesians. So I was not planned. So you can go to Ephesians 3, and let me read for you here. This is a second prayer that Paul does, even seemingly spontaneous, because he already had a prayer in the beginning, in chapter 1. And he goes on to talk about, as he's a prisoner for Christ, and then he goes into a prayer for the Ephesians. Let me read that for you in this, in this full context here, and we'll break down the portion of verses 17 to 19. Paul says this, For this reason I kneel before the Father, from whom this whole family in heaven and on earth derives his name. I pray that out of his glorious riches, he may strengthen you with power through his spirit in your inner being, so that Christ may dwell in your hearts through faith. And I pray that you, being rooted and established in love, may have power together with all the saints, to grasp how wide, how long, how high and deep is the love of Christ, and to know this love that surpasses knowledge, that you may be filled with the measure of all the fullness of God. Now to him, that is Christ, who is able to do immeasurably more than we all can ask or imagine according to his power that has worked within us, to him be the glory of the church and in Christ Jesus through all generations forever and ever. And we all say, Amen. Amen. Isn't that an amazing prayer? It's like, yeah. boom, love that prayer. And I'm so glad that Paul in this led by the spirit had this prayer for the Ephesians because we also want to have that prayer be for us and for our lives. Amen. Amen. So you don't drop the word. The word will drop you. Wow. So, like sorry for those online. We had somebody we had to talk to. <laughs> now let's look at this verse because if our, if our goal is to be to have Christ be the center of our lives and and for him to be that first love statement. Do what you did with what you had at first. With Ephesians 3.18. That the prayer is that we are to be rooted and established in love. First of all, this love. Many of you have heard this word agape, right? We've heard agape. Agape is so difficult to describe because it's the love that God has for for us and in many ways we can't fully grasp that and in many ways we can't fully give the agape love but it is a complete love it is a consistent love it is an all relentless love it is encompassing and it's for each and every one of us and do you do you realize that this is the same love that Christ had for us when he said, I am leaving the throne to go and die for you. Mm -hmm. 
This is the love that rescued us from our sins. This is the love that gave us a purpose. This is the love that said, you know what? When you're going through hard times, I am here with you. And nothing can separate us from the love of Christ. Romans 8. Amen? Amen. Nothing. Nothing. It doesn't matter what we've gone through. It doesn't matter what we will go through. It doesn't matter what our feelings say. It doesn't matter what the facts say. It doesn't matter what any circumstance say. Nothing can separate us from the love of Christ. And when we, when we look at saying that our first love and what that thinks of, when, you, when somebody meets somebody and they, they have that encounter with somebody, it's different than the love that is a fully embraced love. It's different than a first encounter love. And I think what was being written to the church in Ephesus and Revelation is that to say, hey, go past the first encounter of when you meet somebody but I want you to go back because when we think of those that are in love, right? There's a different connotation, right? I think back when Val and I were first meeting and dating, oh, of course. And I know Val had the goosebumps, right? When I would walk in and see her at Big Five as a manager. I don't know if she's going to say that's true. But for me, I remember that there's that, wow, there's the person that I see and I'm getting to know. And now we're growing in love with one another. And after being married six years, I know, six years, praise the Lord. There's a lot of, there's difference in the love that when it was first founded, when Val and I first got together. And the difference is this, that when you first meet with somebody, you're trying to get to know them and you're trying to find commonality, even values. Do we match? Wow, we love to spend time together and we'll try to make those moments. We'll talk for hours on the phone. Whereas now there's a matured love. It's different than a first impression love because now we've embraced trials together. That Val and I had to go through a difficult housing situation to maybe having things that we thought would happen and come in a certain time frame that did it. And we share in that commonality of going through pain together. Mm -hmm. That's usually what you don't focus on when you have a first love, right? And so when Christ is saying to embrace him as his first love, he's not saying go back to the feelings, right? But he's saying, no, come to me because the maturity and the depth is richer and greater. Mm -hmm. I will walk with, with you through this pain. I am your first love. And there's a greater degree of death that I want you to walk through. Yeah. Right. Amen. And I hope everyone online can hear. Okay, good. We were having technical difficulties. Were you guys good online? Okay. All yes. Right. Okay, good. So, so I couldn't see Val if you agree with me in the goosebumps. Sorry. <laughs> she turned off her camera. Yes. <laughs> Man, the truth hurts. <laughs> but I hope you get, and I hope that that image of of when you really know somebody and you love them and you share now shared experiences, pains, difficulties, joys, little things that only you get. That's what it's going to be like when we have our first love with Jesus. Okay. Because those things can be easily going out the window if we're distracted and if we're focusing on things that aren't the main thing. First love. And so that's the love of God. Remember, it's all encompassing. It's, it's never going to fail you. It's greater than anything we think or imagine. It will sustain you. That's the agape love. And we're going to be breaking this down slowly, so I hope that you're enjoying this, because we're only going through like two verses. Good. Amen. Because it says here that we, his prayer, and I think about this too. Paul is writing to a group of believers. He's, he's not saying, I pray that you'll actually accept Jesus Christ as your Lord and Savior and know that love. Again, this is a deeper type of love. He's saying, I pray that you, already Christians, 
well be rooted and established or grounded in love. So let's look at that word rooted. That's the title of the message today. First love, get rooted. Okay? Rooted in Christ's love. Now, when we think of roots, John, if you can be able to throw up that first picture of the tree. This is exactly the imagery that Paul's using, is roots. Because we need to have, we want the love of Christ to become our root system. And I took a picture of this tree when Val and I were feeling better. Um, and it's this really extravagant looking tree with the branches that really sprawl out in Santa Monica at Palisades Park. It's a really nice long park along uh, the, the coast and people try to illegally work out there with their workout groups. And they're not allowed to. <laughs> like, like her up and do yoga, they're coming. So um, definitely recommend to check out that park. It's one of Val's favorites. So we went there to, uh, you know, as we were feeling better and walking through the park and I, that tree struck me and I started thinking to myself, you know what, I wonder how far the roots go because the branches you go, they're pretty expansive. So what is the average length of a root system to be able to support that tree? And of course, Google has the answers. And this is all for a typical tree. And if you can go to that picture, what's next, it gives you a breakdown. So if you take a look at the trunk, you walk and you or you measure from the trunk to the end of the branches, which is called the canopy radius. And you would measure that many feet, okay? You would, so let's, so I actually measured that in Santa Monica. I stood at the root of the tree and I used my almost, not full feet, uh, walk. Um, and I walked out 37 feet. So what it says here accordingly is that most large tree roots spread at least two times the length of the canopy radius. So that means that tree I looked at is 37 times two, 64 feet. And I could only see some of it on the ground, but we know it goes further. And if you've seen sidewalks where the roots go under, you know the roots go further. Now, I, I have a word that just came to me on speaking into that. Because you may be thinking, well, what does this have to do with love, right? Oh, I'm getting there. It's coming. Because Paul says that, he, that his prayers that our roots, we will be rooted in love. And if you read this here, what does it say about, it says something different when it comes to trees that happen to be in dry conditions or dry seasons. Now, you would think that a tree would wither and die, but trees want to survive. They want to thrive. So when there are dry seasons that hit, what happens is the roots not only go twice as long, they'll actually extend three to five times longer to go searching deeper for nutrients. I'm sure you know where the word is going here. Because I realize that for many of us, we've been in dry seasons. Many of us have been, just because there's a new year, it's January 1st, 2022, that doesn't mean everything's automatically better like that. It's another day. We like to hope so. We can start resolutions, and I like to use that as a reason to, to kickstart some things. But the reality is some things linger over from 2021. Some things have lingered over from 2018. Some things have lingered over from childhood. And so some of us have been feeling like, even though it's January 4th, that we're in a dry season. But there's hope for you. Because I want to encourage you with this word. And if you feel like you are in that dry season where your, your prayer life, it takes so long to just pray for five minutes, it feels like 50. Or you pick up the word and you're like, how I'm reading, but it just seems like text. My encouragement to you is to dig those roots deeper. Because just like a tree, and we're supposed to be rooted in love in Christ, a tree in a dry season so not just survives, but thrives even greater because its roots can be established deeper. So that when the storms do come, because John 16, 33 says that we will face trials, but take heart because Jesus has overcome the world. So we are going to face the winds. We are going to face dry seasons, but we will still be 
like the tree planted by water, Psalm 1. Jeremy likes that one. That we will be able to sustain and thrive in those times because we have our roots going deeper. Yeah. And so think of a dry season right now, not as well, I'm still waiting for what I've been praying for, or I just don't get anything out of this book to say, no, Lord, I know you have something for me deeper. That this is an invitation to go to a place that I haven't yet met in Christ's love. That instead of saying, Lord, is this all there is? We say, Lord, I know there's more than this. You see the attitude difference? It's challenging us to go deeper because imagine if God gave you everything that you wanted right now, how much of a temptation would it be just to be content and be like, hmm, I'm good now. But no, take this as a time to go deeper. Have those roots go deeper. Because God has something for each and every one of us. And how much more so with the love of Christ. Amen? Amen. It also says that we, he uses two metaphors here with roots, as we talked about. And also, <clears throat> NIV has, uh, has the word established. Other versions say grounded in love. This, this is a, a word used from architecture, talking about a building. It's the same word that's used in Matthew 7, 25, when Jesus says to build the house on the rock, that it was founded on the rock. It's the same Greek word. So that not only are our roots supposed to go deeper in the love of Christ, but also that's what is founded on in the love of Christ. And so... It's laying the foundation. And that was also many of the hearts of the leaders to say, hey, let's go back to some of those basics. Let's look at some of the foundational things. Because we know it's important. We've heard the children's Sunday school and, uh, story before of the house on the sand and the house on the rock. But we have to take that from knowing that as a child and applying that now as an adult and say, okay, I know that there's good works. I know I'm trying to look at my spiritual gifts. I know that there's, there's things that I can do, but is that all centered in the love of Christ? Let me check my motives. Is that in the love of Christ? Lord, test my heart and know if there's anything wicked within me. If there's any anxious thoughts within me, as David said. Because everything else is built on that foundation. Because like I said, the storms will hit, just like in that scripture. And so we're not meant to be immune to the storms. We're meant to get past the storms. And to be a standing testament and a witness to others who are facing that storm, but maybe they don't have that foundation of Christ yet. So allowing those things to shape us, but we're also centered and not shaken. And we've seen a shakening, right? In 2020, 2021. And you know, believe it or not, the shakening has some good effects. Yeah, it rocked our world and changed things. But there was a lot of non-believers saying, wait a minute, maybe there is a God because their world got shaped. And so they're looking. And it also shook some people out of the chairs of the church. <laughs> but it also got people to say, hey, wait a minute. I need to, I want to, what is my foundation? Is it in Christ or is it just going to church? Right? Or what is church? It's more than a building, right? It's the people of God. And so, yeah, just because there are a shaking, sometimes it's to shake off the things that aren't to remain so that what's left is pure. And that's what we want to see. Yeah, so we, we are to be, and so to be established, it's a foundation. It's, it's last all seasons, right? Through the good and through the difficult. It's going to be it's going to be sturdy it is a sure foundation let's continue on as he says and i pray that you being rooted and established in love may have power together with all the saints let me just stop there and make a few mention i don't want to go too much on that because we do have a time where uh, alex is going to speak on community and this focuses on community but briefly it is god who supplies that power 
to equip us, to sustain us, to lead us, to motivate us, encourage us. And he says in Ephesians 1, 3, did you know that right away, same book, says, praise be to God, the Father, and the Lord Jesus Christ, who has blessed us in the heavenly realms with every spiritual blessing in Christ. Did you realize that you have access to every spiritual blessing? Hey, that's great. This is the power that, that God has given us through the Holy Spirit as, as believers. And so we have this power, but it's not just for personal use. Did you see it says together with all the saints? Yes, our faith is personal, but we're also supposed to do life together in community. Which is why it's important to celebrate five years together. And, and through all the changes and all the things that the well went through, but also what you went through. Because we are to do this together. It's not just a personal, but a communal faith. And I love how it says together with all the saints. Not together with all the sinners. <laughs> right? It's focusing on, that's actually an important distinction. Because with the love of Christ, we have a new identity in how he sees us. That our sins are forgiven. We are now saints before God. Saints aren't those that have passed away and are living in heaven. No, Ephesians 1, as he writes this letter, says, um, <clears throat> oh, it was Colossians 1, sorry. Says he's read as he's writing the letter to the saints. And so we already have a new nature in how Christ sees us. Behold, the old is gone, the new is here. Second okay. Corinthians 5, 17. So I'll let Alex talk more about community when that comes. I know, I had to spoil it. It's actually just a preview for what the main event will be. But, but look, at, look at how immense, look at Paul's attempt to describe the immensity of Christ's love. Where he says this. He says that, that we may be rooted and established in love, may have power together with all the saints to grasp how wide, how long, how high, and how deep of this love of Christ is. Now, let me break that down to you. This is just fascinating. Because do you realize the, the width of that love extends to every single person from Jew to Samaritan, to Gentile, to the Samaritan woman at the well. We got to see and see and hear that dialogue of the longest recorded conversation between Jesus and an unknown woman and that the love of God was for her. Despite her past, despite her choices, despite her being born in an ethnicity, her gender, that the love of God was for her. And the, the width of that also goes from biblical times to now, to age as a child, to those that were later and beyond. That's the width of how, how Christ's love extends. But also think about the, the length, right? The length, as Ephesians 1, 3 to 5 says, that, that the length of the love of Christ is even before the foundation of the world. Isn't that crazy? That he loved you. It said that he chose in us, in him, before the creation of the world to be holy and blameless in his sight. In love, he predestined us to be adopted as sons and daughters through Jesus Christ in accordance with his pleasure and his will. That's the length of Christ's love is that before this world was created, he already thought of you. And it doesn't, that may even be a, an attempt to have the starting point. And we can't even see in line to the end point of that life because it's eternity. And we will have all of eternity to try to figure out and attempt to fathom the love of Christ, but we can only have so much. But it's beyond anything that we can comprehend to eternity. How high the love of Christ is, is that he has, it says that, and it, that we are seated with Christ in heavenly places. And because of the love of Christ, we have access to the throne. 
I mean, how many of us are glad that we have access to the King of Kings and Lord of Lords? I mean, any of us need help in time of need? <laughs> You're like, yeah, right now, Jesus, help me. Okay. Hebrews, it says this that, that because we have a high priest who can em empathize with our weaknesses and he was tempted but did not sin, therefore we can also go to the throne of grace to receive help and mercy in our time of need. Anytime. Now we can come up and say, hey, dad, papa, father, I need help. And sometimes I just get this glimpse of just being in the throne room and seeing a throne. And, and of course, I have to be kneeling, even though I know he can laugh and just say, hey, you're invited here. Like you can, you're a son, hang out. And I just see his feet and wanting to give him my request and say, help me. We all have that access. We can go to that height to go to heaven. But also to the depth. The love of Christ and the depth of what he has done is that he went from that height and said, I am going to rescue them. And that he came in the midst of our sin, our selfishness, in our dealings with the flesh, the world, and Satan, and said, I am rescuing them from that. That they no longer need to be stuck in sin. And I will die for them. Because for God so loved the world. And he gave his only son. That whoever believes in him will not perish. But have eternal life. That's love. And some of us know and understand the depths of our darkness. Others maybe we accepted Christ when we were a child. But either way. He rescued us from our sin. And took us out of that darkness. And Ephesians 4, 9, if you really want to get into that, you can look at that in your own time. It just says that Jesus went into the lower regions of the earth. If you want to go there into that depth, which is another theological discussion for another time. <laughs> but either way, whatever lengths Jesus is willing to go, he's willing to go for you. That's the love of God. How much more so should he be our first love? And so... We want to, to finish up this verse. We want to know this love that surpasses knowledge. Now, this is a paradox. It's kind of an interesting statement, right? To know a love, right? We already talked about how difficult it is to imagine the, le the length, the height, the depth. Of this love, but it says to know a love that surpass to know this love that surpasses knowledge. <laughs> it's a deliberate paradox because this doesn't mean well it's unknowable, so I shouldn't know it. There's always a starting point of knowing the love of Christ, but this doesn't mean that we it's just speculation or assumption. But there's actual factual knowledge of understanding the love of Jesus. And that we have that to embrace us. Um, on Instagram lately for me, I'll be putting up different, what I would call like God posts or Jesus posts. And a lot of people have their own idea of who Jesus is. Believe me, they tell me right. all the time. <laughs> I put up one, Jesus is king. Yeah, a lot of amens and responses, but there'll be people that will say other things like, oh, Jesus is just a prophet. Or he's just a teacher. Okay. That's a glimpse of who he is. One was he's a king, but he's not God. Right. And so there's, there's, and then there's others that are deletable, I would say, as they say, inappropriate things. <laughs> but for them, that it, it makes me realize how important it is to have knowledge of, of the correct knowledge of who Jesus is. But there's a world out there that doesn't know who Christ is. You could put the verses, you could say Jesus is king, you could put these things, and they'll still in their mind not understand. So there is a place where we need to know Christ. So we can't just say, well, I think it's this, or I have a basic understanding. No, we can always know more, even though it is unfathomable. That there's 
that there will, we will never be able to know everything about the love of Christ. And that doesn't mean that we don't try. That doesn't mean that we're not willing to. Uh, it would be like an example of saying, you know, I, I, I love to do traveling and I want to be able to do more of that. I'd love to do ministry and preach and do that as well. Um, but imagine if I would love to travel, but then I was just satisfied with maybe only looking at pictures. It's not the same. Definitely not the same. Now, I may not be able to Christ is. That would be like me saying, oh, I'm not going to go and travel and see these things. Or to say, well, there's too much, there, there's too much to know. Well, the, just like the Lord could speak to me in, in a place like I went to Iceland, um, but imagine if I never went there and saw that view. And so there's so much that the Lord wants us to, to dive into, and there's so much more. Even if in that example of traveling, I can't see it all, that doesn't matter. I don't, that doesn't mean I don't do it. So just because I can't understand everything about who God is and his love doesn't mean that I'm just reticent by saying, well, I'm okay, I'm good. Because Jesus said that when we accept him in John 7, 38, that rivers of living water will be flowing out. He didn't say that a, a lake of stagnant water would be sitting. That this is the river that's going to be flowing because we want to know more and that love of Christ flows from one to the next, so that person also knows the love of Christ. It's continual. It's coming through. We are stagnant. We don't just think that, and we're not satisfied with just superficial. But we want to be going deeper. Now, the last part is the goal. This is the main goal. To know this love. However hard it may be, however however much it, it, it might be in our mind, but to know that love and to be rooted and go deeper, even if it surpasses what we can think or imagine or experience. We continue. So that we may be filled to the measure of all the fullness of God. That's the result. Maturity. Fullness. And that is a statement of hope for us. Because regardless of where you're at in your spiritual walk with the Lord, regardless of the questions that you've had, the hardships that you've been facing, the dry season like I've been talking about, that there's more. You realize there's more than what you've already experienced right now. Because imagine if you said, imagine if you're a point and you're like, well, that's all there is that the Lord has for me. I've arrived. I mean, that'd be pretty arrogant. But, and that's why it's so exciting, is that regardless of where you're at, on this day, there's more tomorrow. There's more this year. There's more that the Lord has, that we are to get together to the place of achieving maturity and fullness. And we may have only experienced a drop in the bucket for what God has, and he wants to pour out so much more on each of us. Amen? Amen. And to be that mature bride that Christ comes back for. That that's what he's there. And the goal is to look more like Jesus, y'all. To look more like Jesus. First John 3 says this. Dear friends, we are now children of God, and what will be has not yet been made known. But we know that when he appears, we shall be like him. And we shall see him as he is. Everyone who has his hope in him purifies themselves just as he is pure. So there's this, there's this knowing and this hope that we are going to look more like Christ. And to have the fullness and the maturity of that, not just individually, but together as Ephesians 4 says, that that's part of the unity of the body and building up the, the saints is the maturity of Christ.
Well, so what that means for us is first love. Man, let's let's get rooted. Let's go deeper in the love of Christ, representing that well for one another, being all who Christ has for us. Because there is so much more. I know that. I am convinced of that. That there's so much more for each of us. So let us not be satisfied in the way. Yes, we can be content. We won't go into that. <laughs> be content, as Paul says, but be hungry for more of what God has. Content, not complacent. There you go. Content, not complacent. All right. So we're gonna we're gonna spend the time um, in prayer, but we're gonna be doing a, a communion first um, before we have time in small groups. Um, in small groups. It's going to be pretty easy because one, we're going to have less time because of the things that we had planned. You're just you're just going to meet with one person, um, pairs, guys with guys, girls with girls. Same with online if that's possible. And you're just going to pray for one another and pray in the way of how are you going to be more rooted in the love of Christ for 2022? What does that look like for you? So. Just focusing on being rooted in Christ's love. So we're going to be handing out the elements. If you're at home, you can get what represents for you to be the body of Christ as the a cracker of juice. Thank you. Uh, and to be able to take that together. So we'll give a little bit of time. And Tim will be playing a little bit of instrumental right now. Thank you for doing that. But what better place to start with communion? We were able to do that on Sunday too. But as we were going through and talking about first love, couldn't help but think of this. Because we are told to remember what Christ did. And he was with his disciples he told them what was going to happen to him. And of course, at that time, being in their shoes, it's hard to believe. But we now know what that represents. And we're told to continue to do so and to take communion as an ordinance until the Lord comes back. And to represent that, this wafer that we have represents the, the body of Christ. That was put on the cross for each and every one of our sins. He didn't have to, but he wanted to. That's the true definition of love. As Jesus says in John 15, that you know, laying one's life down for another is love. And so he did so for us on the cross. And also that the the juice represents the, the blood that was spilt for each and every one of us. As it took the shedding of blood to be able to, to make amends for sin back in the Old Testament. So Jesus was the fulfillment of that law by doing so as not just providing the sacrifice, but being the perfect sacrifice. Because he had no sin. So he said, I'm taking theirs putting them on my shoulders, regardless of what they've done in any generation, and I will die for them. And he overcame that for us. So we're going to take this time to just reflect on the love of Christ, why he came. Perhaps this is a perfect time for you, maybe through the busyness of the holiday, or even if you've had rest, but to think through and to say, here I am, Jesus. Here's what's holding me back. Here's what's been distracting me. Here's what's been bothering me. It's a new year, and I want to be more rooted in you and the love that you've given me. So let me just pray for us, and we'll spend just a meditative time, and maybe a few 
want to play some piano during that space, and then I'll lead us in the prayer to take it together. Okay, so let's pray. Father God, thank you for your son, Jesus. And what a privilege it is to me to gather here today, today to be able to take these elements to say thank you, Lord Jesus, first of all. Thank you for dying for me. For nailing those sins on the cross that, that I was supposed to bear. Even though I don't deserve it. Sometimes I have a hard time letting go of certain areas. It's not mine to keep because you died for me. And you've given me a new life. Thank you, Lord. Nothing can separate me from the love of God. Whether height or depth, angel or principality, nothing in life can separate me from the love of Christ. So speak to me today. Speak to each of us today by your spirit that you would touch us. To show us how to be rooted in this time into your love. And if that means extend those roots further down, show us what that would look like. For you, for you speak to each and every one of us right where we're at. I know that's your desire to supply us and to nourish us and to keep us strong when those winds hit. We can be rooted in that love. So speak to us now. In Jesus' name.
Christ, his rule in reign will ever sing all glory to Christ. So together give glory to Christ for what he's done for who he is you take off the top layer if you're here in person there's the wafer you can hold that together as Christ said this is his body it should be taken to do so in remembrance of him for each of us for the forgiveness of sins. And as he said, to all sin take your remembrance of him. generosity towards us, your great mercy. And we can be found in the love of Christ. And we are secure in that. And even if the other things in the world come at us, let us not be shaken, let us not be dismayed by those things, but to remain focused and fasted on, on your love. Thank you that you've loved us even before the foundation of the world, that even the capacity to love is because you loved us first. Show us how to go out from this place to be rooted and grounded in that love. I want to pray, Lord, that as we do so, we would have wonderful revelation, greater than anything we've seen or know so far of that love, so that others can know who you are and that you are God but also that we can have the richness of Christ's love within us. Everywhere we go, no matter what we do, each and every day, let us have more of that love, Lord Jesus. Thank you. In Jesus' name.